Hi, it's Gareth Williams here from secureyourwallet.com. We're going to have a look at Bitcoin QT now. So we're going to start off by heading over to bitcoin.org. And if we scroll down and click get started with Bitcoin, we're going to go look at option number two, choose your wallet. And then if we look down here at the bottom on the left hand side, you've got desktop wallets. And we want to have a look at Bitcoin QT, which is the first option in the list. So what is Bitcoin QT? Bitcoin QT is the original Bitcoin wallet. It's a full Bitcoin client and it builds the backbone of the Bitcoin network. It's very stable and it offers good security. But there's two really important things you need to take into consideration if you want to use Bitcoin QT. First of all, Bitcoin QT downloads the entire blockchain to your computer. So what is the blockchain? Well, the blockchain is actually a record of every single Bitcoin transaction ever done, going all the way back to the very first Bitcoin transaction back in 2009. Currently, as I'm recording this video, the blockchain is 16 gigabits in size. This means you're going to have to download this entire 16 gigabits of data to your local computer. Now, this is going to take several hours and if you want to get up and running with your wallet straight away, you won't be able to do anything until this download has completed. Another important thing to take into consideration is the size of this download. Now, if you're on a device like a netbook or a laptop and you haven't got much hard drive space, you don't necessarily want 16 gigabits of your hard drive being taken up by the blockchain. So this product's really much more suited to somebody who's got a desktop with like a one terabyte hard drive and they don't mind sacrificing some of their hard drive space. You also have to take into consideration that every time you open up the wallet, it's going to synchronize and download the latest blockchain data to your computer. So you need to be using it on a regular basis so it keeps synchronized with the network. Otherwise, if you don't use it for a while and you open up the wallet, it could take an hour to download the latest updates before you can even begin to use the wallet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually on an old machine and I'm actually going to download Bitcoin QT and install it and just sort of run you through the initial install so you get an idea of what's involved and how long it's going to take. So I'm going to go to download here. I'm going to download the Windows XE file. I'm just going to run it. It doesn't take very long to download. I'll just minimize this. And we're going to go through the standard Windows installation. So we'll just go through the defaults. Click next, click finished, and Bitcoin QT is installed. Now it's opening up the wallet for the first time. I'm going to allow access through the firewall. And if we look down here at the bottom, you can see it says synchronizing with the network and it says currently we're 264 weeks behind. So what it's doing now in the background is it's downloading all that blockchain data to our computer. Now, like I said, this is going to take several hours and you won't be able to use the wallet now until it's done this initial download. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it downloading and then I'm going to come back to this once it's finished downloading and we'll take a quick look around the interface of Bitcoin QT. Before I go, however, I'm just going to show you where the blockchain data is actually stored on your local computer, just for a matter of interest. So what you need to do is go to the following directory. So it's on your C drive in your users folder. Now my user is called spare. You need to type in whatever your user account is here. Then you want to go to app data roaming. And then you want to go to Bitcoin. Click enter. And you see this folder here called blocks. Well, this is actually where Bitcoin QT downloads the blockchain data to. Currently, there's hardly any files in this folder. But as I leave it downloading over the next few hours, there'll be more and more files downloaded to this folder. And eventually there'll be probably, you know, well over 200 files in there. So we're going to leave this 
downloading and we're going to come back to it in a few hours. Now Bitcoin QT has been synchronizing for about two days on this old laptop. It's finally finished synchronizing and uh, I just want to go back into the Bitcoin installation folder and show you the block size and all the downloaded blocks and you can see how big the actual final download is. So if I go to C users back into the Bitcoin folder and over here we've got a folder called blocks and if you have a look at it it's now 16.8 gigabits in size. So that's all that blockchain data that it's been downloading over the last couple of days and uh, that's taking up quite a lot of hard drive space now. If we actually click into it you can see all these .dat files and these are, this is all the blockchain data downloaded onto the machine. And there's actually 235 items now downloaded. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the Bitcoin QT interface. It's actually quite a basic wallet. You've got your send options where you'd put in the Bitcoin address that you're sending to. Your receive option and your transaction history. And if we go into um, file settings over here, you've got an option to encrypt your wallet. Now you should absolutely encrypt this wallet. That should be the first thing you do. So if we go in and I'm going to put in my standard password again. So that wallet is now encrypted. It's giving you a warning, but yes, we definitely want to encrypt the wallet. So it's going to close to finish the encryption process. So I'm going to click OK. And I'll reopen Bitcoin again. And you'll see that it's now encrypted. So we're back in Bitcoin QT. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner now, there's a little lock symbol here indicating it's encrypted. And if you have a look at settings, the encrypt wallet option is now grayed out. Another place to look is in the options here. And you might want to set a transaction fee. So we could change it to millibits and you could set a transaction fee of 0002. And if you go to the window option here, I like to tick these two options. So that means that when I close the X in the corner of Bitcoin QT client, it won't actually shut the program down. It'll just minimize it to the tray in the bottom right hand corner of the computer. So I'm just going to click apply to that. Click OK. And now when I click the X in the top right hand corner, when we go over here, we can see Bitcoin QT is still running in the background. So that was a quick look at Bitcoin QT. If you found this video useful, please like, post any comments, or subscribe to my YouTube channel, Secure Your Wallet. You can also have a look at my website, www.secureyourwallet.com, where I've got lots of interesting reviews and lots more information about Bitcoin wallets and Bitcoin security. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.